Previously on Renaissance City. Spartan, Demon Shade. Alexander Griffin has run off and you are still embroiled in battle. Blink has swung around and is coming back toward your position. And the two of you, you get that white flash and you see the image of the masked face. And as soon as that is gone, where Blink was, you see cotton fall out of the air and land hard on top of one of the crates in the warehouse. Where's the mayor? Did you sell us out? Spartan, I... A lot of hesitation in that answer. I'm going to guess you did. Cotton holds up the pistol, aims it at a, a mech unit, and presses the big button. Holy shit, did you just take that mech to Pound Town? Hey, Cotton, meet the mayor. Raymond, you did it. You got the mayor. What are we going to do with him? Spartan, what are you doing? Leaping into action. He just blocked the mayor. He's going to twist around, assess the situation, see Shado down, drop the mayor, and leap at that mech with uh, the soup man punch. Cotton is going to use mind control to bring King back to consciousness. You ever notice how Spartan's character is just an enemy magnet? It's like he wills it into existence. He's all about taking the heat, so none of his homies have to. I love it. He has three friends in this world. Two of them are laying unconscious. He's just like Lieutenant Dan and the Maelstrom. Bullets are raining in on him. And he's just screaming at him. Rone Lota! He's gonna scoop up Shadow and jump through the roof. And I dive head first into that hole with the intention of giving my life if I have to to protect Raymond and Demon Shade. King goes sliding across the gravel parking lot and slams up against the wall of uh, of the warehouse um, and falls limp. Back to the mayor, carrying him like a picnic basket. Round up our wounded, put him in the car. Head off to the vet with your battle wounded friends, the new alien weapon technology, and Patricia in tow. You guys get in the car and, and Patricia, and, and you know what I mean? All of her duplicates come back to her and she's sitting there in the back seat. And she goes, you guys have such cool names. I think I want a hero name too. Hell yeah. Last time we left off, we bailed the factory. Our guys got kind of a butt kicking. Yeah. Um, last we saw Raymond, he was walking off, carrying the unconscious Effie Duramus, mayor of Renaissance City, in a tightly bound package. Where are you headed? We're going to get him put on ice. I'm going to get back to the hoopty and uh tear ass out to our turos to the lake okay ready for a vehicle check sure <laughs> say yes yes one got it all right tell me tell me what that means you're in the hoopty you you tear ass out of there tear ass i got him on the floorboard in the passenger seat stuffed uncomfortably and uh tearing ass to the lake get near give him the honk let him know we're coming in and then he's got to let himself in through the gate, get the gate shut so the horse don't get away. Greeted by seven or eight dogs? Uh, yeah, ha- about a dozen. About a dozen stupid dogs. And you know how dogs are. They make more friends. Every stray dog comes around. You know, there's always a new dog on the porch. There's security. And then uh, we grab the mayor and take him up to the, to the house. Still unconscious? Yeah, you tell me. I think you probably, as you get him out of the car, you kind of jostle him awake, and he's uh, maybe groggy, um, confused. You know, he's been laying pinned up upside down, 
you know, all that blood rushed to his head and just kind of mumbling to himself, trying to shake it off a little bit as you are lunch pail carrying him up the front steps. Take him inside. You take him out back. Where are you taking him? Yep. Take him in. Arturo. You about? Freeman. Good to see you. Who is your friend? I have a package. This is uh, Mayor Duramis. Effie. He uh, he has sided with our nemeses. And uh, you need to give him the vision of what could happen to his world if he continues down this path. This is a lot to ask. It'd be helpful in our cause. He's a mayor. He's got clout. He can get the city off us. Then let's get him some tea and that's a terrible accent. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Let's let's get him some tea and we'll um, go from there. We'll cut him loose. Not that chair, the other one. Ramus, you hurt my feelings. Scar- Scarlet Spartan. Your your feelings. What about my head? My jaw is so swollen, I can't, I can barely even close my teeth. You're lucky to have it attached. I was compelled to rip it off your neck and kick it into the Lake Superior. Arturo is going to show you something. It might change your heart. And he looks around the room. Uh, what does he see? Describe the describe the room for us. Describe where we are, please. It's a museum. Arturo has artifacts, you know, um, art pieces and uh, sculptures, trinkets and tchotchkes from around the world. You know, the furniture is antique and, and the rugs are are genuine to uh, Persia. You know, a little bit of decadence, but also kind of cluttered. He's a hoarder. He's a hoarder. To a point. Dramas is looking around the room, wildly confused, scared. Um, and Arturo, is he... Is Arturo sitting? Is he in a wheelchair? Does he get around in a wheelchair at this point? No, not yet. He's, okay. Um, he, he's always got a cane. The cane is probably carved from ivory. And he's got a half a dozen beautiful old canes. I mean, he's a uh, he's old. He's he's feeble. So Arturo is uh, leaned up against the counter in the kitchen. And he he grabs his cane and walks over, stands next to uh, Effie Duramis. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is uh, going to be, this is going to be a bit weird. And he puts his hand in his pocket and behind him, everything seems to shimmer left and right. And you can see it kind of wavy and then the waves become faster the air almost seems to be vibrating Raymond backing up it's almost as if a mirror appears uh, a big oval mirror shape but the image on the other side of the you know as you're looking into that mirror it's not the same as it's the same room it's the same house um but it's not a reflection. It's not a reflection. It the, the the room on the other side is dusty and unused. Now, if it's dustier than it already is, that's really dusty. <laughs> no, you're you're Arturo Arturo is particular. Even though he might be a hoarder, Arturo is is particular about his his things and his collection. Um he he doesn't leave the house and so he um, I think Arturo tends to keep things fairly tidy and, and he has the help of the nurse. Um, I, I don't think the house is, um, when, when we say hoarder, you know, you get that horrible image, you know, uh, from television. Um, 
I think he has a lot of things, and I think that he lives a very cluttered life, but I don't see it as over the top, you know what I mean? Scary to walk into, you know, you're not, you're not walking through piles of trash and small aisles that are only, right, you know, right. available for built up amongst these piles and piles of things as you're, as you're path through the house. Um, I don't think Arturo or Raymond would live that way. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with that. He's right. not sloppy. He's eclectic. eclectic. He's not sloppy. He's eclectic. He's cluttered. He lives a cluttered life. So, you see the reflection of this room in this oval shape. And Arturo steps to the side so that you and Doramus can see clearly. It's almost as if the vision is walking through the house. And you get into the kitchen and you can see rotted or dried old fruit on the counter, shriveled up um, as if untouched for who knows how long. You continue on, and the vision moves out the window on the lake, and it spans out over the yard. Nothing is green. Um, Small patches of grass in dirt, um, broken limbs in trees, no leaves, barren trees of every sort. Even the evergreens have gone brown and dropped all um, all of their needles. You continue out and the vision widens and lifts up and you see the lake. The lake which is typically blue and it's muddy brown. And there are massive logs washed up on shore and other trash and and flora um, all wrapped up in these huge piles on the shorelines, and you can see debris floating everywhere in the lake. It pulls up and further. Off on the shoreline to the east, you can see, you can almost smell smoke. You know, Raymond always talks about how how filthy and how caustic the air is here on Earth. And it's it's as if a fire is burning and a massive fire is burning. Pull back further and the vision pivots and off in the distance you can see great plumes of smoke. The vision starts heading that direction. These these forests that are around the lake, this this untouched um, this untouched growth is all barren. And you get closer to the city and you can see multiple places in the city where these massive fires are burning. In the air around the city, you see several flying vehicles of some sort. They aren't like the airplanes that you have seen. They're shaped similarly, but they're not the same. They almost have these wings that um, seem to flutter like a dragonfly, maybe. Um, they, they, They look like insects, but not. They still look like machines. And they are zooming in in pairs of two, in and out and up and down. And the vision pans in, and we start to get more granular as we go down into the city. There are these vehicles, large trucks maybe, they don't look like the vehicles that you are used to seeing, Raymond, um, nor is is Doramus used to seeing it. They they almost seem to be walking instead of rolling on wheels. Long lines of of armored soldiers walking in formation um, around these vehicles as if they are patrolling the streets. You get even more granular and you see people huddled in the corner of an alley and you can see the fear in their eyes and the vision swoops out and up and you see the Ford building off in the distance and you swoop up to the Ford building and over the top and it spreads out onto the river and you can see over into Canada and you have to get way, way, way above the city before you can clear the smoke and the grime that's in the air. 
Arturo steps back in front of the mirror, the air again, you know, the vibrations, and then boom, the vision is gone. Uh, Mr. Duramus, that's not the fucking accent. Mr. Duramus. Yeah, just just give him an old man voice. This um, this is um, this is what I see happening here. Hmm? This is likely part of your fault. It's a funny thing about the um, the future. Most of it is um, how you say malleable. Right, you can um, you can shape it a little bit, yes? He turns back to the counter and picks up a little dish. Candy? And offers him a little dish with some peppermints and stuff in it. And Duramus, wide-eyed, just, you know, maybe out of courtesy, just reaches up and takes one of the peppermints and puts it in his mouth and just kind of sitting there slack-jawed. What do you do? Mayor, the power walkers may be the only thing standing in the way of that future. And uh, what, what, and what would you have me do? Hmm? Disclose to the people, shut down guard, get law enforcement off the power walkers. This ain't my world. I shouldn't give a damn. But the thing about it is, these beings have interstellar travel. We don't beat them here. They may come to my home. Now, excuse me. They got something that belongs to my people, and I intend on getting it back. Arturo, as always, care for him as an honored guest. And if we're lucky, we'll reunite again. Mr. Mayor, um... You have a, a chance here. You can make this uh, maybe not so bad. We need to get to them now before it gets um, before they get us to then, right? Hmm? Effie, Arturo once told me something, and now I'm going to pass that knowledge on to you. You must be a hero. He's right. That's what I said. I'm going to feed the dogs. You need anything? I'm um at the at the moment no I'm no I'm um Arturo you need anything from the grocery uh no um we uh we have what we need thank you where are you headed all right go out open the trunk set the frenzy loose deli meat dunk, 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 dunk. everybody's all the dogs excited. Cats, smorgasbord, the whole the whole brood. Cats, I think that one's a coyote. You're like, you're 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 like the you're and like then, the um, Snow White of Renaissance City, <laughs> right? He's like, hey, you you show back up at home and just you know the birds and the squirrels and the dogs and the coyotes and the foxes <laughs> and the everybody comes out to greet you. Mostly the meat eaters, the vegetarian feeding the carnivores. Yes, because that's what they're. I mean, that's their diet. That's their that place on the food chain. You gonna mount up, head out, head out. Where are you? Where are you headed? Vehicle check. Roll them dice. Roll all two dice. <laughs> okay, got a six. Nothing to go with it. So one success. You successfully still continue to know how to drive your own car, keeping it rubber side down. Yep. Where's where's the rubber taking you? We go back, back to that indiscriminate lab that we broke free from, where we ended up without all our gear. You you want to go back to the training lab downtown Detroit, not to the sanatorium? Okay, okay, mm -hmm. great. What are you doing when you get there? I'm pull up about a block out. I'm gonna get on the power talker. Sable, Sable, are you available? R Raymond, is that you? Yes. Coco, Coco. Are you healthy? I, I am. Fighting fit. I, I guess. Yeah. What's? Are you? Are you? Are you in danger? I'm gonna come pick you up. All right. He's gonna slow drive past that lab. Just give it an eyeball. How many stories? 
Uh, two. And uh, how much square footage per se? I mean, you... per level, probably thirty five hundred square feet per level. That's not big. Okay. Yeah, it's not. It's not huge. Uh, but you know that you came up two flights of stairs from the basement that you were in and that there's another story on top of the main floor where you guys escaped from. Escape is kind of a strange word to use. It seemed like we just walked right out. Well, okay. Uh, any action people, things? No, there are a few cars parked out front. Okay. Four cars. That's it. I'll go get Sable. I'm assuming he's still at the veterinary or at uh Troubadours. Yeah, that's where he is. Yeah. Okay. Drive in, get the chalupas, get led inside, go downstairs, shake and bake. Sable looking good? Um, he's Hey! He's the Scarlet Spartan. Troubadour. Hey, you got anything that make a big hole in a wall for a floor? Um I have some blasting caps. Anything quiet? Anything quiet. Hmm. To make a big hole in the floor? No, probably not. Um nothing liquid. Hmm. If I had known, I could have perhaps um Here, let me work on it for a few minutes, hmm? What the what else? Uh, how, how have you been? You're doing all right. Hmm? Where where are your friends? Yeah, we got knocked down a peg, but everybody's okay. They'll rest and recover, recharge, and then revenge. This sounds like a productive day. Hmm? Yes. Sable, the uh, you got that the you got the brain bug off you? Uh, no. Oh, hope that doesn't. Troubadour's been working on a on a suppression system with with Captain X. Um, we've done some tests on it. Um, it it seems to it seems to be showing some sort of you know coming to fruition, I guess. But um, no, it's it's still in me. They took us to the training facility. We got gassed out. There, there's other powers there, and um, we pretty well walked out of the place. There wasn't a lot of security to keep us from getting out of there. I'm hoping there won't be as much security getting in there, but uh, we left all our stuff behind. I got something there that uh, I can't replace, so I'd like to go get it back. You with that? Yes. Um, yes, I am. I I owe you my life, so let's roll. Jupiter, what's that mix look like? The um, it's going to take a little while for me to get the um uh, the proper combinations together. Um, you know, I can't just um, I can't just uh, whip up um, you know, fifty five gallon drums of um, you know, hydrochloric acid. So I can help you make the boom, but um. That's about it currently. Hmm? I like all those words, but time is of the essence. And I got a big hammer in the hoopie. We'll come back for that and use it another time. Good? Yes. Good luck. Au revoir. Au revoir. Call me on the power talker if you, um, if you find yourself in a pinch. Hmm? Excellent. I'm going to write down the address. This is the pinch if we need it. And Troubadour walks up to Sable and sticks out his hand to shake it. They do the double forearm grip. And Troubadour looks the Sable in the eyes and goes, Do not forget what we have been working on, yes? Breeze. In the nose, out the mouse, yes? In the nose, out the mouse. <clears throat> do I need in on that? It, um, it is a a technique to um to help calm yourself if you get um a bit out of sorts. No, um, no, 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 no. I was talking about this embrace. I need in on that. 
Raymond's going to send right hand to Troubadour, left hand to Sable, and Perfect. give him that same. And we get a triangle. We get a triangle of the of the forearm grip between the three of them together. You get this overhead shot where you see the three of them all lock hands and arms. Oh, I can't wait to do this. The power walkers. We're going to smash cut pulling up. Are you, are you doing the same thing? Are you getting out a block away? Are you driving right up to the front door? What are you doing? I'm going to give Sable the Intel. I got, we came up from two floors down and, uh, we ran into very little resistance. Doesn't mean that's not going to be the case again. Not exactly sure where uh, our things are, are stored. So we may just want to move through walls if we have to. Perfectly comfortable and capable of doing that. You say you need to make a hole in the floor? I can help make a hole in the floor. Yep. And uh, the one thing we're looking for is the muckler. It's like a chainmail sleeve with a cannonball in the end. It's the only thing that survived the dimension travel or whatever that was. Only thing that survived your journey here from Mayheim, besides yep. you. Yep. And we can find the rest of the guys' stuff bonus. Are we going up against XJT units? Is that what's happening? This could get nasty. Be ready to run. I'll get the big hammer and uh, some railroad ties. What else he got in the truck? Crowbar. Sable flips his flips a switch on his, uh, you know what I mean, on the piece on his neck, and the smoke, um, you know, the shroud over his face. That that rolling smoke mist over his face pops up. Slow mo. We're getting out of the car. We see, um, you know, we see Spartan. You know, put the crowbar across his back, grips the sledgehammer. Sable puts on his duster, and are you just walking in the front door? What are you doing? Are we charging? How, how's it going to go? Break it down for me. What do you think, Sable? You want to go in through the roof, or you want to go in through the back wall and just start heading down? You want to start at the bottom and work our way up, or you want to start at the top and work our way down? They were holding us in the bottom. They might have tripped our gear before we got there. Let's go from the top down. You, you say from the top down? And the sable, uh, you see him lift up his left hand, and you and the sable both raise up into the air um, and go flying over the uh, over the buildings, you know, so that you're out of sight. Um, you, you've kept yourselves out of sight, and you rise up and you fly over to the top and you land gently on top of the building. Do you want to break in through the roof, or do we want to go around to one of these windows? We probably like to be as quiet as we can for as long as we can be. So you're on the roof, Sable um, hops up, lifts you up in the air, and the two of you slowly descend, uh, uh, you know, down the side of the building toward um, toward a window. Uh, roll perception. Ooh, I like that. Come on, baby, hot dice. Three dice. The way that you are, I think, I think that you can direct him to a window where, um, you direct him to a window where there's obviously no one going to be. Using telekinesis, he slips the lock and gets the window open, and you guys, um, you guys enter a small office um, on the second floor. It's wow. very generic. Okay, no uh, war locker that they stored all our gear in, obviously. So uh, no, not in the not in the first room of the dungeon, sir. Yep. Okay, we'll uh, we'll give the door a listen if we hear anything, and uh, proceed on. What time of day is this? What time of day did we get here, man? Uh, you know, what time were we at the warehouse? Uh, it would have been in the morning, but you, you know what I mean? But then you took the, you know, you took Shadow and, um, and King or Shadow and King and Cotton to, um, you know, to the vet, drop them off there. This could be the next day, the next week. Yeah. This can be whenever. What, what time, what time of day are we working with? Raymond's moving fast. He wants to be set and ready by the time these guys are up and up and at him. So let's say that evening, you know, like that same evening. Okay. After dinner, you don't see, you don't see any lights on in the hallway under, you know what I mean? Underneath the door. Um, and you don't hear anything outside the door. If you like Raymond, um, I can actually kind of float us a little bit off the floor. That way, you know, we're not, you know, uh, we're making, we're making less noise. What do you Do think? It to it? Yes. Use your powers. You, you lift up off the floor a couple of inches. 
Um, the door swings open. You get out into the hallway. Um, you are you're basically halfway in the hallway, right? You come out this door. There's there's an open office door right across the hall from you. You can see you know down the hall to your right. You can see several other doors, and then a, and then at the end of the hallway um, on your on the left side a stairway that goes down, and then you look off to your left and you know several other doorways on each side of the hallway, and it ends in in a window you know, on the far wall. Okay, Raymond's got uh, railroad ties at the ready. Let's peek in the other open doorway. Um, it's an office similarly adorned um, as the one that you just came out of. There's um, a couple of small desks in there. You know, there's there's a half a glass of water sitting on one desk, you know, e pens, inkwells, several reams of papers, some shuffled around on one desk, one desk very uh, tidy and, and put together. And another the other desk is a little bit um, disheveled, you know, mixed stacks of paper and that sort of stuff. Say, well, I got the feeling this upstairs is uh, stagecraft. It's a facade to make this place look like a normal, typical downtown business building. So we move down, get to where the guts are. I'll, I'll, I'll follow your lead. You're floating us. You move to the right down down the hallway and and start making let, your let, way down the stairs. Well, no, let's try let's try doing another window. Let's just float out the window and float down a floor. See if we can't do that again. And float down to the ground floor? Yep. See if we can't okay. do that again. Okay. So strike that. Reverse it. Um, you go back to the office that you just, that you entered through. You go out the window. Um, you float down and roll perception for me, please. Three dice. Okay. Maybe we need to eliminate these three dice from the roll. So three successes. You peer in, you guys, you, you move around a little bit, you're listening in, and um, you direct him to an, another office where you, you know, you, it's obviously dark. You don't see or hear, um, you know, any activity inside there. Sable flips the lock, um, lifts the window open with telekinesis, and in you go. Okay, same thing. Let's, let's continue uh, not stepping on the floor. I like that. Okay. You know, he continues to float you guys around the room. Um, over to the doorway. This is this is a, a bigger room. Um, there are several large filing cabinets in here. Um, it's probably twice the size of the of the office that you were in upstairs. This one is on the on the far corner of the building. You would assume, like if you are to come out the door of this um, of this storage room, um, you're going to be right at the bottom of the stairs in that that were you know in the hallway above you. So you're kind of on the corner, the back corner of that building. Another mundane office. Um, seems to be. Do you want to look around the room, or do you want to yeah. head out? We'll give it a peek. Let's uh, okay. pull a file cabinet or two open. Uh, roll investigation. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> One dice. On six dice, the sable got zero successes. Well, he's he's a little rusty. I think I think the sable is. Um, I think that he's very nervous, um, and it's yeah. obvious. Um, I, I I feel that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's palpable. Um, so you kind of rummage through the room a little bit, you know, trying to be as quiet as possible. Sable's, you know, opening drawers and using his telekinesis, and you're, you know, you're rifling through some things, and you just, you know, this. This is obviously another mundane room. You know, you're not you're not finding um, signs of any of your equipment in here. Okay, I want to roll a perception to see if Raymond senses his uh, his anxiety. Oh, I don't think you need to roll. I think it's obvious. He's he's a little twitchy. You know, he's you, he's his eyes are darting. Um, as someone who has done the things that you have done in your life and been a military man, um, and you know. As someone who has been in charge of dozens and dozens of warriors, you recognize these signs. Okay. Fable. Yes, Raymond? Give me that handshake you and Troubadour did again. He reaches out his hand and gives you the handshake. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to bring him in. I got you, Sable. In through the nose, out through the mouth. You've been here, you've done this before. 
And he's very quickly nodding his head. And you can see your words kind of processing in his brain. Yes, um, in the nose, out the mouth. Read in the nose, out the mouth. Okay. And he kind of steals himself a little bit with that prompt from you. I think you're probably right. These two floors are obviously, I, you know, I mean, I don't know. Is this a bank building or something? I mean, what? Yeah, this is all staged. Yeah, I think, um, I think we need to go down. Get ready for some action. Should we just take the stairs or? I think we're smarter trying to, you know, uh, be, be quiet about this. All right. I mean, uh, we can, we can spring to action when we got to spring to action, but I mean, I'm, 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 I'm following you. So if if you want to, if you want to go in full force, you know, then, then let's make that decision right now so that we can do it and just get in there and just start smash and grab. Um, Let's not cause alarm. We're going to be like shadow. All right. Same. Okay. Let's float and be on the ready. And as soon as anything happens, you let me off. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. You, you make your way out the door. Um, to your left, you, you recognize that path immediately. Um, to your left, it comes out and it's into that lobby. Um, and to your right is the set of doors from the stairway that you came up from downstairs. And there's a stairway right in front of you that leads up to the second floor. Um, but you, you know, this path already, you, this is the path that, that you went out and, you know, took that right and went out the front doors of the building. So there's that big receptionist desk there on your left down the hallway. There are several offices, you know, small ficus in the in the hallway there. Sable turns to the right, you know, and gently opens the doors to the to the stairs going down. I'll cover left. You cover right. Cover left. Cover right. What do you mean? I mean, as we're going down, I mean, just anything comes out the left. I got it. Anything comes out the right. You got it. Okay. Um, and lifts you up and you guys you guys start floating down the stairwell and you get you get down to the next level you know that there's one more level down which is where you guys were um when you escaped do you want to go all the way down and start at the bottom and work your way up or do you want to go down to this next level get in and then go down to the bottom level try this level first you get down to this next level um big heavy steel door um smash and grab or we going quiet do your magic. Okay. Um, I want you to roll covert, and I want you to roll covert with plus two dice, please. Ooh, okay. Come on, baby. Come on, Raymond. Be quiet. Five successes and three sixes for the sable. One more six for six successes, and a two for seven covert successes. That was a hell of a roll for sable. Raymond is rolling 50-50. Three successes out of six dice. Um, I think between the two of you, it's, it's, you know, you're able to get the door open quietly. You open the door into the hallway and the first two doors, the one on your right and the one on your left are the same doors that are on the offices upstairs. And then past that, you see three of the big metal doors that you immediately recognize from when you were here. So there's three doors on the right and three doors on the left. Um, of those big heavy metal doors with the, um, you know, with the bar lock on the outside of them. Okay. When we were here, there were powers in those rooms. I don't imagine that's where they would be storing our, our gear. Let's find the gear and then we'll do a Luxie in there and, uh, free any captives. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and check these, uh, these mundane left and right. Are you going left or right? Uh, well, Raymond, let's go left. The door is locked. Okay. And the door on the right? Also locked. Hmm. This is where Shadow coming in. You know. Um, okay. I mean, I can, I can try. Well, let's, let's, before we make any noise, let's do a, let's do a round and see which of these rooms is occupied and by who. You get to the first door on your left and... You will have to open the slot on the window from the outside um, to see inside any of these doors. It's not like the, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, there's not just like a window that you can peek in. It's, it's covered. 
It's like a prison feeding slot. Yeah, kind of. Um, slide it to the side, yes, and 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 there's a a window area, you know, type thing that you can see through. Yes. Okay. Let's uh let's take a look. Are you trying to be? You still trying to be quiet? This whole trip until we run into somebody is going to try to be quiet. Okay. Roll covert. Ugh. Two successes for the stable. Come on, baby, hot night. Hey, that's more like three. Three. Okay. Um, you narrate, and I will embellish. Okay, now remember, it's dark, right? It is. And Raymond has night vision. So he's going to slide it open. Empty examining room. Nothing in there. So you um, you step back and cross the hall to the other door. And you hear footsteps in the in the stairwell behind you. You're not sure if they're coming up or down, but you can hear footsteps in the hallway. Let's get up next to that wall. They come up, we're, we're along the, the wall, right beside them. And Raymond's at the ready with uh, railroad ties. Okay, you back up against the wall. And entering through the door is an XJT-313. Crush it, Sable. Daniel, you have returned for your training. Oh, shit. Let us complete your training. Oh, no. Okay. But act fast. Let's throw this... Uh, Throw these railroad ties at it. Okay. Um, All right. Edge order. You're up. Give me a roll. What am I rolling? You're if you're chucking railroad ties. Roll agility plus two or plus one. Four. Wait. Plus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. No, I got one more. Sorry. Four. Damn it. Damn, you got a Yahtzee though with all the odd numbers. Okay. Tell me how you do one harm. What and and where you end up? Railroad tie lodges right in its left eye, starts sparking out. Its head, you know what I mean, slams back, and it its head snaps back forward, and the 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 railroad tie sticking out of its left eye, and you know what I mean, and and you just see hammer at the ready, ready to jump. Sable reaches out, two, three. Four and a six and five. And then they're going to roll. Oof. Nothing. Dookie oh, no. numbers. Uh, that's six. Sable reaches out his hand as if, um, you know, he's going to do the, the crush or slam move, you know, with his telekinesis. And the XJT unit moves lightning quick um, and is on Sable before Sable can even get his hand up and at the ready. Only one success there. Sable is able to hold off the XJT unit. It's back to you, Raymond. What are you doing? Okay, Raymond's going to do Thunderclap. Zero successes. Three, five, one, 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 three, 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 five. Five success. All right, tell me what happens. Is this going to disable it? Gun ski. Okay, like I said, Thunderclap. He's going to bring both his hands together across his ears. Smash him in, pull his roll, railroad tie out, and let it slink to the floor, nice and tall. Perfect. Say, well, they communicate to each other. We need to move fast. You get that left office, I'll get the right off. Or you, you get the right office, I'll get the left office. Let's go. He swings up, um, and the door just whoosh, pulls off the hinges um, and goes tumbling down the hallway. Uh, we gave up on covert already, didn't we? And like I said, these things yes. are linked. Yep. So he's just gonna kick that fucker in. Okay, you you don't even have to roll. Door okay. gets blasted cool. off its hinges. All right, smash and grab, moving quick through the place. Anything that might be holding our stuff. Um, you inside the office, you see um a, another filing cabinet, um a small desk and chair with a with a small lamp, and um in the in the wall itself um is a safe. That's about maybe four foot high, about two and a half feet wide, um, mounted into the wall itself. Okay, Raymond's going to run over to where Sable's at. Sable in the other office um, is flinging open drawers. You can see, um, you know, a variety of things kind of flying up in the air as he's as he's as, as fast as he can, um, you know, going through every drawer, every every cabinet. This this other room looks more 
more like a small filing room um, than the office type area that it, that's in the other office that you were just in. Uh, but there is also there is also a safe mounted into the wall in that room. Table, I got a safe in the other room. Let's crack these. Uh, how do you want to crack them? What are you going to do? Table crack is Raymond crack is uh, Raymond's going to use the big hammer. Crowbar? Man, it, it's got a crowbar on the end. But big hammer is going to have to uh, loosen it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, go for it. Roll Mike. Okay. Yellow dice, you ain't done nothing all morning. Oh, that was everything. <laughs> Seven. Seven. Perfect. Tell me what happens. Raymond gets that hammer. And I mean, it's all welded. It's all one piece of, a, of you know, ore from the earth. And he swings it so hard, he goes through the wall into the side of the safe. And it cracks the whole damn thing door on the front i mean it's completely collapsed on one side the door on the front is bent out enough that it's just you can almost reach your hands right into it and get whatever's in the inside okay rips it open um inside there are several large files um like paper files there uh, and i mean several there's probably three no, probably not that many. There's probably 15, 18 files stacked up on the top shelf. There are a few small trinkets and gadgets in there. Um, and on on the bottom shelf, you see um, Shadow's costume, his mask, you know, his costume, his daggers, all of those sorts of things. You see Cotton's clothes folded up, um, the pistol that Cotton had. You see the power walker. What do you do? Power walker. You see the power talker? Pack it all. Pack it all. Back to the purpose. Files included. Okay. You got the files. You got everything. You're you're holding on to it. Um, shove it in a bag. Um, you turn and walk out of the office and uh, the sable. There, there's no walking. We're moving fast. Okay. You, you pivot out of the office um, and cross the hall. And the sable, as the sable is is ripping open the um, the door off of the safe with his telekinesis, and you see some more files, you know, you see some other random things, and on the middle shelf, you see your Spartan helmet sitting on top of a pile um, of chainmail. You also see your Tonto um, and the other power talker. Okay, load it up. Ah, let's get out of here. Okay, how are you getting out? You got to go up the stairs? Raymond's going to put the helmet on. Muckler intact. Muckler's intact. What about my Colt 45? Yes, all of all of your all of your goods were there. Let's jam. Sable, rush out of here. Up and out that back window as fast as we can. There is no window down here. You are underground. No, no, that's what I'm saying. We're going up to the first floor. And then out that back window oh. in, that, in that corner that we... we Sorry, we I misunderstood. In. Okay, you head out into the stairwell. As soon as you hit the door, you see two XJTs below you and two XJTs above you. Two coming down the stairs and two coming up the stairs. What do you do? Okay. Stairwell, what's it made of? I mean, I've always imagined it was metal. It's a... it Yeah, it's a concrete well with metal stairs. Let's use that big hammer. Try to collapse them. Try to collapse the stairs. Okay. Take out the center post. Whatever it takes. All right, come on, baby. Sixes. <laughs> nice. Well, they didn't bear fruit. Four. Okay. You you tell it. I'll embellish. Okay. Raymond takes that hammer, hooks the the center support, completely severs the damn thing, and all the stairs just shift abruptly. The two at the bottom fall to the bottom, and the two at the top are rolling right towards us. The two at the bottom go tumbling down the stairs. The two at the top start to lose their balance and lean forward. Um, and the sable is going to reach out his hand and attempt to fling them on past you. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven successes for the sable. And we're going to see if they can. You just need a little wake up. And that is one, that is two successes for the XJTs. Um, so they they lose their balance on the stairs. The dice are your friends today. And 
um, Sable uses their momentum against them with the telekinesis and flings them on past you and down the stairwell behind you. You have a you have a quick out and a quick getaway. Um, Sable grabs you up and the two of you fly up through the stairwell, out the door, out the window, um, and away you go um, into the night. Back to the hoopty. Back to the hoopty. Where do you end up? We're going to go check on the boys. Back to the vet? Yep. Okay. You drive off together um, and are headed back to see uh, see if any of your friends have made any bit of recovery um, over the last few hours. Thanks, Sable. You still got it. I, I uh, yeah, that was fun. I forgot. I forgot. Uh, forgot what that's like. That was exhilarating. You still got it. All right. I've been um, you know, I've been locked down for so long that um, you got a little dusty sitting on the shelf. Yeah, maybe. You're back in the saddle. Let's go check on the guys. Maybe we should pick something up for them. Soup in the bag. A little soup? In the bag? Some. Yep, absolutely. All right, we're going to pick up some soup in the bag. We'll do a Bonnie's run. They got creamer in the bag. They got soup in the bag. It's my favorite kind. Excellent. Today's Tuesday, so she'll have the uh, she'll have the, the cream of mushroom today. That stuff's good. I think that's Cotton's favorite. Renaissance City is a Prowlers and Paragons actual play produced by TTRP Theater. TTRP Theater is a group of actors, artists, writers, and gamers running a diverse set of games in a diverse set of styles. Thank you to the generosity of our Patreon supporters, Adam the Vampire Interpreter, Ben Rogers, Chaotic Story, David Hagberg, M. Lemadi, Izzy Skirmish, Jess Rogers, Matthias Olson, Mr. Cultist, Thea Vick, and Tdorf67. If you would like to join us as a producer in our little theater, please search TTRP Theater on Patreon. We are at Ren City Pod, R E N C I T Y P O D, on Twitter. Don't forget to follow TTRP Theater on Twitter and Instagram. Jazz Abramowitz is Demon Shade. Chris Freedom is Cotton Dearborn and King. Dean Martin Jr. is the Scarlet Spartan. And I am Duke Walter, your Game Master. For all of our content, please visit TTRPTheater.com. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time in Renaissance City.